Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about using and uh, cork and bark and grit and all this stuff to make a, a realistic rock base. Um, one of the things I often see people do is just tear some flat pieces of cork like this off and stack it up and then stick a mini on top and call it a day. And I'll admit there's certainly armies I have that are based like that. There was a time in my life when I looked at it and thought that looked fine. But when I look at it now, it just looks so hollow and false. And the, the reason that it really gets to me is because you just look at it and think, that's cork. And it's such an easy thing to fix. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how we use a combination of these things to make a more realistic base. So here I've got a little 60 mil base that uh, I'm going to be using for uh, uh, another Doom Bowl coming up because you can never have enough of those. Um, so I thought, what a nice opportunity to do this. So first off, let's just talk about the materials. Um, obviously, I've got some cork here. This comes in these flat sheets. There are differing thicknesses. I usually just go to like the hardware store and find it or like a craft store. You can get it at all those places. Um, some of it's softer, some of it's harder. It really doesn't matter. Um, so that's number one. You get them in big sheets. They're pretty cheap. It's a couple bucks. They last a long time, even for doing a whole army. Next up, we have um, some soil cover like forest bark for interior house plants this is the one i like um this stuff looks like this okay um i like these these look like really nice rocks in scale um they it's better to use these than real rocks often um just because these have a nice texture and real rocks often don't have the scale to shrink down because this is supposed to be representing something truly massive like in at scale this rock is as tall as you okay so it, it would have a lot of detail in it okay and then of course finally we've just got grit or sand um i've got like some citadel sand here i quite like it it's hyper fine um you know whatever you like um and then i've got some army painter grit i've got a bunch of different sizes and types of grit i quite like this stuff um, it has nice little, you can see the varied size in there from kind of a mix of little bigger rocks to different rocks. You can also just go grab grit or little rocks out of your yard or whatever. That's all fine. Um, and then, of course, we're going to, you know, there's a couple other little secret ingredients we're going to use here. Uh, namely, our good old friend, white glue. And something you might have seen before, which is your DAP all-purpose spackling paste. Uh, very useful thing. Okay, so that's kind of our tools list. Um, and then obviously we're going to use some super glue to attach stuff. So uh, the first thing to do is think about your model and what you're trying to build, right? Uh, like how big is the footprint of your model? Where is he going to sit, etc. In the case of this guy uh, that I'm building, he has like two feet that are spread fairly evenly. But you want to think about that. Like if your model has, like if you're doing cavalry or something like that, you want to think about where the positioning of your model's feet are before you build a lot of height. But height variation is both at the same time the toughest thing to build in because of the nature of how we have to stick models on here, but the most essential to making things look realistic. Okay? So what are we going to do? So what I want to do with this base for him <clears throat> is have uh, – let's see. I've got a couple nice pieces here. And I'm thinking build it up a little and have something like that. At kind of so he can kind of sit on top of there. Uh, I'd put him up with his feet there and there. So I'm going to start. Uh, I like to just tear some cork pieces off kind of randomly. Don't use the edge that is flat or if you do scuff it up. Um, if you're going to stop with just cork, which a lot of people do. So if you're not using the bark, like let's say I just wanted to do some cork here. Okay. Let's say that was where I was going to stop and then I was going to do other things around it. This is what I see a lot of people do. They sort of build something that looks like this, and then they glue this down, and then they stop. And the problem with that is it's so unnaturally flat on top that it just – it's obviously cork. So instead, what we're going to do 
is we're going to figure out kind of how this all looks. <laughs> Maybe we'll do run one rock. There you go. We'll do one rock. Yeah. There we go. That's a nice mix. And we'll just sit him up on top of that. There we go. Okay. And let's and that's the thing. Like you can play around with this. Make sure you get it to a place you like. There we go. Yeah, that should look good. Um, if you when you tear up your cork, you're gonna get lots of little hangover pieces. I like to save those in a baggie, um, so that that way I can like pull them out later, grind them up, and use them as other interesting grit. So there you go. That's gonna be a nice little base for him. Something like that. Okay. So what are we gonna do? All right. Well, let's start with the easy part. We're just gonna super glue all this stuff down quickly. So nothing magical about this. Try to remember how you had your pieces laid out. Slap some glue on here. And we put da da, glue the pieces together. Not very exciting on video. Okay. The key with this is there's no wrong way to build this as long as you're building in height and your model can sit on it. <laughs> That's really all there is to it. Okay. Um, so don't like. Nature is very random in its patterns, and, and that's what you're trying to make. You're trying to make something that feels organic. Let it feel free to let it hang over the side of the base, to let it, like, you know, you can see how that see how that branches over the side? Sure, let that happen. Break the fourth wall a little. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it can make it more visually interesting if you kind of, over you know, cross it over a little bit. It's especially good when you're doing... Um, if you're not doing stuff that needs to rank up, if you're doing stuff that's by itself. Kind of overspilling the base a little bit can be a good way to make it more visually interesting. Okay? All right. So now we've got a nice rock and some cork. We just use a little accelerant to get that to dry real fast. If you want to make sure it's really locked down, you know, I could always just, like, drop another dab of super glue in there or something. Make sure it's nice and solid. You want it on there. Okay. So... Now comes the uh, the first and most important step when we're dealing with the cork. And that is we need to break up the flatness of it. And there's lots of different choices of how to do this. Okay? We can divot it. We can, uh, we can cover it. Or we can add grit and texture to it. We're going to do all that. I'm going to show you all of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little scraper file tool here and i'm just going to start hacking at my cork okay to like create little little natural sort of divots and changes i'm not really trying to be nice about this or thinking about what i'm doing the larger flatter the piece of cork that you have the more you want to do this you scuff it up you break it up you crack up the edges you just get in there and just mess it up, okay? And that gives it a much more random sort of feeling rather than this very even cork look. So there you go. And now you can see, again, we get these little bits. I save all these little bits because I just put them in a little baggie and then I mix them with glue later and use them as just texturing grit. Now I I'm never waste anything. And that makes real fun grit for like little rocks. Okay. So already, you can see we've got a more interesting visual setup here, right? And the, the nice part about this is you can still, like, if this were to be our base, if this were a smaller model, I could still pretty easily fit flat feet on many parts of this, right? Like here, even though it's like this. So I could still very easily have um, a, a model with, you know, that it has flat spaces uh, attached very easily. Okay, so now we're going to go to our dap. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, this is the lid on this stuff. All right, so what are we using the dap for? And you can see, I've, I've used a lot of this stuff. I use this stuff a lot. Okay, we're going to get out our dap. And what we're going to do is we're going to get in here and we're going to dap around the thing to smooth out some of these edges. One of the problems when you use cork is your vertical levels 
become uniform. What I mean by that is because you're putting layers of cork on top of each other, vertical step one is exactly the same distance as vertical step two as vertical step three, right? And so what ends up happening is that's very, very visually fake. Because if you've ever seen like rock striations or plateaus in nature, guess what? They're not that evenly spaced out, okay? So what we do here is we just kind of smooth it over and we build a nice little base um, around the thing. We can also putty in cracks and stuff if we don't want to have big holes down in the base. For example, down in here where there's kind of a hole or a crack, if we don't want that to be there, we can just grab some, some of the dap, put it over that. Now that's solid, right? But what we're really chiefly doing here is trying to create some places where the levels are connected, where instead of just being like ch -ch 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 stair steps, it creates a more natural incline where mud and dirt has gathered over rocks, etc., and we've gotten something that's much more natural and organic. Uh, a fun little trick I'm not going to do in this particular project, because I'm not doing it with this guy, but I'll tell you about it as I'm applying this, is if you want a fun effect, um, if you're familiar with the technical paints from GW for, um, uh, for like, Agrellan Earth and Martian Iron Earth and that whole line of crackle paints, um, a fun thing to do is when this is still kind of wet, this dap, you put a... a fairly thick layer over this stuff with that uh, of that stuff so like on top of the dap you put a fairly thick layer of the um, the iron earth or the agrellin earth and what that will do is because they have very very radically different drying speeds um, the uh, Martian iron earth will dry quicker and then the dap underneath will dry slower and as it does so and sort of shrinks and dries, it will pull the cracks apart bigger. So if you've ever wanted really, really deep, deep, big cracks, um, that's a neat trick to get it. You combine drying times um, to make it to make the underlayer pull it apart very organically. Kind of a cool trick. I found it out accidentally because I was being lazy one day and I've used it on several bases since when I want it to really look like a sort of maybe like a dried out riverbed or an extremely water choked wasteland. Okay, so now what we've done is we've kind of put some dap around and we've kind of created some spaces where um, maybe it's not as flat anymore. So again, we're breaking it up. Now, now comes the fun part. Before we can go on, I have to let this dry. In the next phase is when we're going to get into breaking up this cork and base and making it look more organic through additional texture. So for that, we're going to come back and use some different stuff. Um, so, I'm going to let this dry, and we'll be back in a minute to do everything else. Back in a moment. All right, and we're back. Okay, so everything's dry. You can see the dap has hardened nicely there. And you can see how that breaks up the form and shape a little bit of the cork. we still got all our nice divots and stuff in there to make that look more natural. We've got our big, big giant rock here we'll use. But we're not going to stop there. So like I said, we've we've there, there's lots of different ways you can break up the look of cork. You could at the very minimum do what I did where you take hacks and chunks out of it. That's what I would recommend as your absolute minimum. Okay, so if you're going to use just cork for small miniatures on like 25 or 32 mil bases or something like that, great. Use the cork. At least scuff it up, rough it up, take chunks out, break it up, break up that height and form. But we're going to go farther. So next up, we're going to grab some Vallejo Dark Earth Paste. Now, there's a lot of these different pastes. Um, they have new bottles now, so that you're, if you go find a bottle at your local store, it won't look exactly the same. Um, but these things last a long time, so hence why I still have the old bottle. Because the problem with the dap is that it's, it's very flat. It's very white. I don't know if you can see that, but it's very flat. It doesn't really look very naturalistic. So that's going to be the next thing we do, is we're going to take some of this Dark Earth, and we're going to just spread it around here if you've got an old crappy brush you can do that we're going to get it up on the cork in some places we're going to cover the dap we're going to shove it down into the spots down in here now if we have little spots where it comes through like where we can still see the the white dap that's no big deal 
that's fine. What we're trying to do is just add some texture. This has a, you know, the dark earth has a wonderful like mud to it, right? And you can see, I'm gonna try to hit mainly on the flat areas of the cork. And again, I'm gonna put some bigger spots in here like this, where I'm breaking up the, uh, the vertical stair stepping. So that way we don't get this constant solid flat exchange in between the various levels of the cork. I'm also going to get up here on my uh, on my bark. One of the problems when I see people use these big rocks like this bark often is they won't have it connected to the base in any way. What I mean by that is it'll just kind of be sitting there and it'll be its own thing and it'll just look very disconnected from the world. If you've ever seen rocks, like big rocks, like if you've ever been out in a national park, especially out west where they have big rocks, you know, there's mud and dirt up all over them because they're sitting in nature. Mud blows up on them. It rains. Things collect, you know. So, like, rocks are rarely totally clean. Um, they have mud and grass growing on the side where dirt builds up and stuff like that. So we're going to try to capture all of that by forcing some of this up. And at the same time, it then varies our textures even more and makes it look even more natural. Right, because we don't just have one solid texture. We have splits where it's rock coming through and there's dirt that's gathered on top and so on and so forth. Okay, so we just kind of spread this around. Whatever works. It doesn't it doesn't need to be pretty. It doesn't it's there's no magical trick to this. It's just kind of getting it on there and making it look, you know, neat and creating some visual interest. Just go nuts with it basically. Okay? Whatever you like. So, okay. So now we got all that, and you might be saying, well, Vince, you're covering up a lot of that cork. Yeah. Yeah. That's the idea. The cork is like your good base. It's, it's your start, not your stop, if you're going to take it all the way. Okay. So now I got something like that. You can see I still got a little bit of the white poking through here or there, and, you know, whatever. Who cares? That's fine. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be not flat it needs to be very random feel organic make sure to have any weird spots poking up stuff like that okay so now we set that down wipe off our little stick here okay all right now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our grit now some people might say oh well you should let the the basing paste dry um before you before we add the rocks and grit and stuff nonsense i say I say nonsense. Um, so, for this, we've got, obviously, as I mentioned before, this, like, black battleground, whatever. It's this sort of, like, very rock size. And then we've got some uh, some of the GW sand. But, again, I don't... It's not like there's anything magical about that sand. I just happen to like it. Um, you can use any sand you like. But you notice the difference in texture here. All right? Look at how fine that is compared to that. And that's what we want. We want a smattering of different textures. So I'm going to put both these to the side. Now I've got a little, this is my crappy pigment palette that I keep here. Uh, the other thing I use this palette for is I'm going to take some of my white PVA glue, squeeze that in there. And then I'm going to take some water. I always keep a water bottle beside my hobby desk. Always very important. Lots of uses for that. And there we go. And now I'm going to grab my glue brush. I keep a nice crappy old hobby brush around specifically for doing glue. I'm going to get it all nice and wet, and then I'm just going to mix that glue water mix up until it just it's a nice little milky paste. Okay? All right. Now, what am I going to do? Okay. And this is still very, very wet. Like, this takes a while to dry, and that's purposeful. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up here, and I'm going to start dabbing some around. And let's see. Where else would be cool? This looks nice. How about right there? And you'll get some on the brush and whatever. Who cares? It's going to mix in. Uh, here looks neat. Okay. Sure, down there. That looks cool. If it, if it sounds like I don't have a plan on this, you are correct. Randomness is your friend. Remember, nature isn't planned. It's just an organic random patterning. So the more you're random about it, like, don't balance it. Like, go, well, I need one here and one here and one here and one, you know, just do, 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 kind of spotty, right? Wherever grabs you, that's the right place. Okay. So we got some of that around. We rinse our brush. 
because we don't want to leave glue in the brush. Even, even our crappy glue brush shouldn't have it in there. Then I'm going to take some of my little rocks here, my little rocks and grit, and get some of that. And I'm just going to sprinkle it on here. And I'm, I'm going to aim for the glue, but I'm not going to like only worry about hitting the glue, by the by. Okay. Uh, so there's some there. And some there. And we're just kind of getting it in there. Now, the nice part about using the grit at the same time is that that grit is also going to dry and help lock it into place. Then I'm going to go into my sand. And I'm going to go over the same areas. And we're just going to put some sand there. And some sand there. And some sand there. All right. Okay. And what that does is it creates a nice variation of the textures. So now we have the natural variation of the cork, of the bark, of the basing paste, of the big grit, and of the very fine grit. Okay? If things are kind of loose, like if you get some around and you like it, I can go back into my glue mixture and I can like put another drop on top of there. The 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 glue mixture will get will go away. Like it looks very pronounced right now. You know, if you're using true white glue, it will go down. Okay, like once it dries, it will be clear and invisible, especially when mixed with that amount of water. Where I, I went like one to one, so it's probably a 50 50 mix of, uh, of glue and water there, just in case you're curious. And we can always sprinkle a little more sand in there if we want to pronounce that even a little more. Na -na -na, da -na -na. Whatever has to happy. And then basically, since we got that in there, I just take it, I give it a quick tap. Just to get all that like real excess off. We don't want to go too crazy. Just a couple light love taps to get the extra sort of junk off. And now we let it dry again. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let this dry completely. And then I'm going to then I'm going to prime it and zenithal it and dry brush it. And that's how I get it going. So what I'm going to actually do in the next video is I'm going to do the uh, I'm going to let this dry completely. Then I'm just going to apply the zenithal with the airbrush off uh, camera um, because if you can watch you know, any other videos I have on zenithal highlighting to see what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back and show you how I start to build this into a more organic scene and use undershading to push the lights and the darks. Do you need to do all of this stuff for every base? No, absolutely not. Can you do this stuff for every base? Sure, whatever you like. But the point is that the mixture of the paste, of the grit, of the sand, of the varying levels, this is what creates the visual interest, right, on the base and makes it look very natural. All right. So, as I said, it's going to take a couple hours to dry completely. Uh, I'm going to put it under a heat lamp, a little drying lamp, so it should dry in a couple hours, get nice and solid, and then we'll come back with it painted and we'll finish up. See you in just a minute. All right, and we're back, and you can see everything is all dry. You can see where all the rock is still showing, and we went ahead and applied some sort of zenithal style. Now, a note about this, when you're doing zenithal on an uneven surface like this without a lot of vertical height, um, you know, you still get good shadow captures in places like this, but it helps to take your white or your gray and kind of find an angle the light is traveling from and really like focus from that angle so you're actually like if this is to be how i was holding it i would actually be shooting the airbrush sort of this direction with the white almost at a stark angle just to help pick out some of that detail but of course an airbrush isn't good at picking out tiny rocks and little sand but you can see all the little grit and detail and the fact that there's cork under there or you know stuff like that now looks largely hidden but our next step to bring it up Real quick, before we start painting, and this is fast, I'm just going to get some pale sand. Uh, this is, of course, Vallejo model color pale sand, uh, an old favorite of mine if you've watched uh, any of my videos about preparing and undershading. And all we're going to do with a very nice soft bristle dry brush is just go across the model and just pick out all the edges of that detail. We're going to be very light about it. We're not going crazy. We're just giving it a nice light touch, picking out all those cracks and crevices and little things to get some undershading, to get some deeper variation and really get that texture popping out. Okay. And then basically once this is ready to go, once this is done, your base is ready for painting. 
Now, you might ask yourself, okay, Vince, I've been sitting here watching this for like 25 or 30 minutes or however long this video is. And by the way, good on you. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, I'm not going to do this for every 28 millimeter miniature I paint. And to that, I would say totally fair. Do your bases as you like, as always. My hope is that by showing you all these techniques in combination, you can extract the ones of them that you like and use them, you know, for your miniatures in a way that you find uh, most compelling. And of course, you know, the bigger the base, the more you want to spend time on it. You know, what I'll say is that overall, especially if you're factory lining this stuff, it's really not that time intensive. Um, the I, I mean, to actually create them. Now, fair warning, the time intensive part is the drying. Like the DAP drying takes several hours. The grit paste drying takes several hours. So like you don't want to start these at the very end. Um, don't be dumb like me because I do that all the time. I can't break myself of this terrible habit where I will wait until I'm completely done painting the miniature and then remember I haven't started the base yet. Uh, I am an idiot. Don't be like me. Um, so what you want to do is obviously do this kind of in the middle, get them ready, and then go with your minis. But, uh, so there you go. That's how you do the base. From here, what would you do? Well, you'd start painting the thing, you know? So what I generally like to do, if you want to know how I go forward, is I like to pick out the, um, the mud uh, with some sepia ink, uh, which I use to sort of, uh, you know, allow the undershading to still work. Okay, so like in all of this area here, that's dirt and going up onto the rock here and around here, basically anywhere I have that sort of gritty texture, I apply the um, the sepia ink and go from there. Um, that gives me a nice balance between to figure out where my browns are going to be versus my grays of my rocks. And then from there we go, if you go to the video I have on painting a Sylvaneth forest base, that's going to take you more or less the rest of the way across. Um, this is sort of the pre-step. That's sort of everything from that point on. But, you know, the real key with painting from this point, if you don't want to watch that whole forest base tutorial, is lots of variation, washes, dry brushes. Use these repeatedly over and over again to build different tones in. Don't stick to just gray for your rocks. Build in browns and greens and reds. Same with your mud. Get your greens in there. Get your reds in there. Get different interesting color tones into that dirt. So, there you go. There's the, the base prepped and ready for painting. I hope you found this useful. Um, I hope this can help you elevate the way that you use cork or bark or grit in your base to make more realistic sort of rocks and nature scenes. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, hey, give it a like. Uh, subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. Share this with someone if you think they could benefit for it. That's always the nicest thing you can do and deeply appreciated. And as always, we'll see you next time.